The Queen, pictured regal on her throne, smiling at the dinner table, or even decapitated. A new exhibition at London's National Portrait Gallery shows the dramatically changing relationship between artists and Elizabeth II during her 60-year reign. In the 50s and 60s, the, 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 there is this formal image of the Queen. Around the 60s, she begins to, to be pre represented more as a mother. Many images depict her away from the pomp and circumstance and portray Elizabeth Windsor as a normal person, relaxed and enjoying life. It's nice to see some of the old, old photos, um, probably from before when I was born. Uh, she, looked, she was very pretty uh, and very glamorous. But the mood changes in the 1970s, when the Sex Pistols' provocative album cover became an instant hit with punk fans. The following 20 years were to prove unkind to the British royals, Prince Charles's divorce, the fire at Windsor Castle and Princess Diana's sudden death. And in art as in life, the reverential aura around the Queen was lost. Lucian Freud's portrait is far from flattering, while Hugh Locke uses plastic toys and cheap jewellery in his. She's oozing, she's sort of dripping, like a, like a, like a, <laughs> I suppose a rotting tropical fruit or something like that. But others, like Chris Levine, remained faithful to the long tradition of royal portraiture, even if Her Majesty does have her eyes closed. Other portraits I've done of, you know, like rock stars, but she it transcends fame. I wanted to create a real sense of calmness. I asked her to rest in between shots, and the moment happened. It was, it was like a kind of magic. The Queen, art and image, shows the British sovereign at different times in her life and in many different guises. But it perhaps tells the viewer more about the artists themselves and the social and political trends that have marked the country in the 60 years since she took the throne.